pink hat for this figurine sweater for a turtle. A little, little bonnet for this toothpick snail. Dog scarf. And a little hat for this uh, sculpture. Hi, I'm Jess. I like to make weird crafts, but lately I have been physically unable to stop crocheting. Today I'm going to show you a bunch of items I've crocheted over the last six months and conclude by showing you how I crocheted over an entire dining chair. I spent my first couple weeks crocheting gray square projects. A few weeks in, I made this Snapdragon brand ribbon candy swatch. I used that pattern more loosely to make this little bathroom rug. I also made this little rug. This is the first crochet hook I had. I used it exclusively for a few months until I ran out of yarn. I found this surprising but a few times when I bought multi-packs of yarn online it would show up with crochet hooks and tapestry needles included. Like I didn't even have to seek them out which was cool. These are two pillowcases I crocheted. This is a blanket for a cat. This is a project I abandoned but I want to point something out about this chair. This chair makes a beautiful background for photos but for some reason it constantly static shocks me every time I get up throughout the day to get coffee and water and snacks and whatever else and it's not just like a little zap it's like it really hurts my hand anyway this is a few things I made back in January starting with this two-tone hat and this eight-foot scarf I designed this hat to look completely different on both sides Russian nesting doll style balaclavas a regular hat based on the smaller balaclava pattern. Finally, these are the gloves I started today, and these are the gloves I finished today! What, what? This is a men's balaclava I made. You can't really see it, but there is a little drawstring around the face. And these are just some fun swatches I made of the African violet granny square pattern. This is how I covered a target lamp in granny squares. I made these little squares with a four millimeter hook, stitched all 23 into a long row, and stitched it over the lamp at the very end. This has absolutely nothing to do with anything, but I bought a decanter for my mouthwash. I just think it's neat. All right, let me show you a bigger project. I had some food items delivered on dry ice and it came in this styrofoam container. Before I threw it out, I noticed that my cat really liked to sit on top of it. So I decided to cover it in granny squares so it would be a little more visually appealing to have around and not just look like garbage. <laughs> Sometimes when I run out of colors, I'll just tear apart experimental projects like this sweater that just wasn't working out for me. Okay, so listen to this. The following is me attempting to give informative tutorial instructions on how to crochet a granny square. Yarn over. Stick the hook in the hole, grab the yarn, pull it out, yarn over, pull through two. I'm gonna spare you those details and let you look elsewhere for a basic granny square tutorial. There's plenty of them out there that don't sound like make 16 double triple backwards crochets and they have to be perfect. Single crochet into the seventh loop from the hook, skip a few, 99, 100. Set fire to your stupid stitches and throw it in the nearest body of water and then chain three, which counts as a double crochet in countries where the metric system is used on leap years and then after that anyway let me just show you more generally how i made this thing this ottoman slash cat perch consisted of 54 granny squares i assembled the center top portion of 12 followed by the edge sections after assembling the general box shape i added a few granny stripe borders at the bottom decreasing a few stitches as i went and stitched in a drawstring underneath to pull the crochet work tight over the styrofoam can you not get off stop it stop it Who's can you this whole little project was definitely a great excuse to make something in this particular color scheme. I really like how the purple and yellow contrast and how the green balances it out. Just as a side note, I never intended to switch to this light purple down at the bottom of the project. I just ran out of the dark purple yarn and just used whatever I felt would fit the best, but I'm really happy about it. I think it looks sick. I'd like to think that I invented this little finishing touch because I haven't seen it anywhere else, but hey, who knows. For this final detail, all you'll need is a contrasting piece of yarn approximately the same length as a crochet hook five or six inches or so all we're doing is adding a cute little crisscross stitch on top of the center portion of the granny square you could definitely do this with a tapestry needle but i prefer just to yank the yarn through with whatever hook i've been using pull the yarn through the biggest openings at the corners then pull the yarn from the back to the front and pull it diagonally across the front. And finally, tie it together however you choose in the back. I like to tie it by sticking the hook under the loop, pulling through one strand, 
and just double knotting it from here. Give it a little snip snap in the back and there you have it. A quick way to add a little bit of extra color to your granny squares. Moving along, I see a lot of discourse within online crochet communities of people complaining about having to weave in their ends. If we're talking granny squares, the centermost portion of the square is definitely the most annoying one to weave in, but other than that, I don't really mind doing it. I've come up with this technique where when dealing with a short piece of yarn, I stick the needle in where it needs to go, and then after that I thread the needle and pull it through. For me, trying to locate a tapestry needle is much more of a hassle than weaving the ends in. I had like five of them, and now I have like one where I know for sure where it is. That's just me though. Moving on again, we are crocheting, and we are crocheting. And time to untangle a knot in the yarn. And once again, we are on the super highway of speed crochet. And that was me knocking over my water bottle. This little cat perch is definitely not strong enough for a person to sit on, but it's pretty enough to want to keep in my living room all the time. This is the beginning of creating a little 70s themed rug for my kitchen. I combined thrifted and new yarn to get this color scheme. I made a few different samples with the colors combined differently before settling on this one. At that point, I threw an Instagram filter on it to get an idea of how everything would look on a bigger scale. I'm using an African violet pattern to come up with this six-sided grainy square. It's been one of my favorite patterns lately. all these little granny squares on a string like little flags to decorate my wall but I crocheted them into a top I will never wear. I also bought a, a yarn winder which I've definitely been having a, a lot of fun with. Does anyone have any wild guesses as to what this purple primordial soup actually is? Any thoughts? No? It's white yarn that I dyed purple with paint when I ran out of purple yarn. I was using up all the purple yarn because I was making a lavender flower bouquet as a gift. I ended up adding five white carnation flowers to the base, as well as some baby's breath and fantasy colored thistle puffs. I also made a bouquet for myself to keep around, although I don't think it's quite done yet. Making flowers was fun because it involved hot gluing the crocheted flowers onto floral wire and securing it with floral tape, which was really satisfying to use. For my own bouquet, I glued the teal greenery slash lavender onto floral wire, but I just slipped knitting needles I wasn't using through the carnations and arranged them in the vase that way. Now for my big project. Right after I got a bunch of new yarn, I made these color swatches just to play around with color and almost immediately decided I wanted to crochet over an entire dining chair. This was very much inspired by the granny covered office chair I saw Clary Berry make a while back. She's a talented textile designer. I started by piecing together a tube top for the chair with the top stitched closed. I wish I could say I went into this project with more of a plan, but Really, I just made it up as I went. Adding squares as I made them and trying to keep the same colors from touching as often as possible. I crocheted over the dining chair with a 5.5 millimeter hook and medium yarn. I joined the squares with black yarn so it would have a more classic granny square look. I was able to join the squares together as I went for a lot of the project, but there were some tricky spots towards the end where I had to sew a few portions together. After a while, this dining chair cover was a lot of fabric to be working with. Soon into the project, I realized that I liked to make one long strand of granny squares and then attach that long strand to the main body of the project. This allowed me to keep the completed portion on the chair longer so I could keep getting up, walking around it, and continuously look at it and think about what colors the project had too much of or too little of in an area. Also, now that I think of it, there may be multiple shades of pinks and purples that may look similar on here, but I'm pretty sure there are no two identical granny squares anywhere on this thing. The skirt, so to speak, of this chair cover was just a little too short, so I added a thin little row of granny squares to the bottom with meticulously picked shades of yarn. At this point from the front, the chair looked deliberate and well-planned, but having to suture everything together in this area in the back was definitely a little bit chaotic, but I did eventually figure it out. All right, well, that's pretty much the end of how it was made. Here is the final thing.
before I go. I'm crocheting a hat here. I made it in this color block style so that it would have a bunch of different looks from the front. The hat is basically 28 rows of double crochet stitches with 34 double crochets in each row. You could make seven rows in four different colors to make the four-tone hat or 14 rows of just two different colors to be a two-tone hat. In conclusion, this wasn't absolutely everything I've crocheted this year, but I definitely showed you guys all of my biggest projects. Uh, thank you all for watching and let me know in the comments which item was your favorite. I may have finally started to burn out a little bit from crocheting all year non-stop, so there will definitely be more Bizarre Craft videos with my other hobbies coming in the next couple months. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and check me out on Instagram under Jessica Crafternoon as well. Bye!